Brown Paper Bag Series. I am with your co-host, Mr. Cola Atatola. Thank you, thank you. I'm here with your host, Mr. Brandon Lewis. I'm Desmond Hardy, and welcome to this week's edition of For Your Ears Only. I wanted to address the Me Too movement, and I actually wanted to share a story that uh, a woman shared about an experience in the professional world where she was a victim of sexual harassment. She happened to be at a very popular conference uh, that was staffed by several of her coworkers, colleagues, and employees. And she was actually walking up the stairs in this grand lobby of this hotel. And as she was walking up the stairs, somebody on her team blurted out, wow, would you look at the ass on that? And to that, several of her colleagues and coworkers burst out laughing. Uh, what makes that particular story even more severe in the wake of such blatant sexual harassment is that it came from her manager. And not just that it came from her manager, but that her manager was a woman. The reason I wanted to bring that up is because oftentimes when we talk about the Me Too movement, we talk about the ways in which toxic masculinity and patriarchy have invoked and corrupted men's mentalities toward women in the marketplace and in the workplace, but very seldom has it revolved around talking about the ways in which women themselves absorb patriarchy and absorb toxic masculinity and then use that as a weapon against other women. Oftentimes, women are the most dangerous perpetrators of misogyny that there are on the world. I actually have a very good friend who is a teacher who recounted dozens of stories to me about how she, being a woman of a very slight and petite frame, she is very body positive and happy and proud of the way that she looks and she dresses that way as well and she tells me on a consistent basis every day she goes to school she hears nothing but microaggressions and slick comments not from her male colleagues she hears nothing from them she hears those microaggressions from other female employees talking about how they would eat differently if they looked like her or how happy she must be to be able to fit in the clothes that she wears or how she looks like a teenage girl or how she needs to eat more cornbread and gravy if she wants to thicken up and again these are women sharing these stories these are women talking about the way that she looks in her clothes these are women talking about certain aspects of her body and making her feel uncomfortable and creating a very hostile workplace for her. I think it's important that while we talk and frame the Me Too movement, that we do not distract from the role that mass toxic masculinity and misogyny plays in creating a hostile environment for most women employees, but women are not the only victims and men are not the only perpetrators of a toxic and a hostile work environment. There are many layers and nuances to the toxic messages that people in the marketplace and in the workplace bring into the workplace. And we've got to bring that all out to bear so that we can fix it and clean it. So I want to hear what your thoughts are. I want to hear about some of your experiences, whether they've been experienced from men or experiences from women, whether those be positive experiences from men and or negative experiences from women and how they've played into creating a toxic environment for your workplace. And as always, click on the subscribe link so you can stay locked in and tuned to us. So again, this is my weekly submission of For Your Ears Only.